In this lecture, we are going to enable our user to interact with our smart contract via the website. So we have been able to grab the contract via its address, its ABI, and its signer. Now we are going to listen for when a user wants to increase or decrease the count. So I'm going to use document.getElementById to get my element that has the ID of increase, which if you go to your HTML, that's the button that a user can press to increase the count. So when this button is pressed, we want to handle the corresponding action. So we'll grab the element by its ID, then we'll add an event listener to it. The event listener will be a click, so we're listening for when there is a click of that button. Then we are going to have a function to handle the click. So the function will run after the click has been performed. Here, we're going to take the contract and we're going to call its increase function. So if you go into your Solidity file, you'll see you have this function called increase, and that's what we're calling in the JavaScript. We're calling the Solidity contract to run its increase function. Then we can append here what we want to happen next. So we can log out that the transaction occurred. And here we can add in tx.hash. Then we can return tx.wait. And then we can have a callback function. We are going to get the count of the contract and put it onto the website. So we'll take the contract and use the function get count. Then we'll have that count and we're going to look for the website and display the count on the website. So we're going to use document.getElement by ID of count. Remember, that is the span element that is going to display the count. So we're grabbing that element. Then we're going to set its inner HTML or inner text property to equal the count. So here we are just replacing its text with the count from the smart contract. Then we can call console.log to say increased count just for debugging. And here we go. Then we have our return statement, which we do have to close off. So just make sure you have the correct parentheses ending here. We're going to close off with the parentheses. And we also should catch any errors just as best practice. We can call console.error and log out error.message in case there is some kind of problem. And we want to do the same thing for the then statement. We want to catch any potential error and call console.error with the message. All right, so that is how you can handle when a user wants to increase the count. So they can't just increase the count. They actually have to call the smart contract to perform the increasing. And to interact with the smart contract, they will have to connect with their MetaMask account. Now we're going to do a very similar process for decreasing the count. So we can just copy all of this and paste it in, but replace increase with decrease wherever it occurs. So we need the element decrease, which is the decrease button. We need to call contract.decrease then we need to log out decreased count once that has successfully occurred. Okay, and let's see, we just have to make sure we put this all into the correct location. So I'm just going to cut these listeners and I'm just going to make sure that we put them right under where we grabbed the contract. So we grab the contract, then I'm going to paste in those listeners. The reason being that we cannot do any of this if we don't have MetaMask. So you have to make sure that you are inside of the if statement that ensures we have MetaMask. Without MetaMask, none of this will be possible because we need to have a way for the client to interact with the smart contract and that is via MetaMask. Because MetaMask allows them to make the transactions and send the payments for the transactions. Okay, one more thing that we need 
is we need to be able to listen for the click of the count span. So here I'm going to create document dot get element by ID of the count because we have to listen for when that is clicked. Here I'm going to make that grab for that element. Then I'm going to add a click event listener to it. So add event listener of click, then have some callback function. In here, we're going to grab the contract and get its count. Then we'll take that count and we'll take document dot get element by ID of count and set its inner text to equal the count. So we're just replacing the count We'll also catch any potential error. If there is an error, then we're going to call console.error on that. All right, then the reason that we need that is because we have to listen for smart contract events. So here we have that count. Then I'm going to add contract.on a count event. So if you go into your Solidity contract, you'll see we have an event called count and we have to listen for those events. Because whenever you call increase or decrease, yes, you increase count, but then you also emit an event. So we have to listen for that event. And here I'm going to grab the method, the count and the caller and have a callback function and we'll console.log that an event occurred and event occurred from smart contract to be exact and we'll log out the method the count and the caller so you don't have to log this out it's just for us to see that events are happening and to learn how you can listen for a smart contract event and then have something happen on your website based on a smart contract event and also remember we need to have this add event listener click on the count span because we actually called click on the count span when we requested our accounts right here we then grabbed the element by its ID count and pressed click on it or simulated a click via JavaScript so that way we can actually get the count loaded in so as soon as the user visits the site we can load in the count Okay, now we have built out our JavaScript file where we have connected to MetaMask, our Ethereum provider, and we've enabled the user to interact with the smart contract via our website. So our next step is going to be to test all this out, for which we will need a server, MetaMask, Ganache, and then we can test out the website. So join me coming up in our next lecture. We'll start testing this website. Do you want the source code? Well, go to the description box. It is right there. Also, click the link in the description box to join the Mammoth Unlimited membership to get 2,000 hours of content. And like, subscribe, and comment below.